Some blame the heretic Serentius or first century rabbis for the origin of Chiliasm. Our investigation has led us to the Book of Jubilees and then even further back to this statement in the Book of Genesis. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Genesis 2.17 through my research, I have found that Barnabas, Justin Martyr, Irenaeus, and Tertullian agreed that there is no bodily resurrection on this earth. The earthly bodily resurrection is for the new earth, after the old earth is passed away. The thousand years in Jerusalem is in the heavenly Jerusalem, which is expanded, adorned, and descends to the new earth. The thousand years in Jerusalem is not on this present earth as premillennialism teaches. It appears to me that the, this earliest chiliasm is more like amillennialism than it is premillennialism. This goes against most reference material you will find on the subject, but I base this on what the church fathers actually wrote. Tertullian fell into Montanism, and this seems to have started a reaction against what the earlier fathers taught. Until that time, everybody agreed that the Apostle John wrote the book of Revelation. The radical anti-Montanist Caius rejected both the book of Revelation and the Gospel of John. The Alexandrian theologian Origen didn't directly oppose what the earlier fathers taught, he gave a general criticism saying that some took the promises of millennial reign too literally or that they looked at these things in a too Jewish way. His follower Dionysius of Alexandria criticized the book of Revelation and noted that the grammar and style were unlike the gospel of John, although he did consider the book inspired. Dionysius debated with an Egyptian bishop named Nepos, and won him over to a spiritual interpretation of Revelation. According to the historian Eusebius, Nepos believed in a thousand-year reign of Christ and the saints on this earth. This would be a view like premillennialism if Eusebius was correct. Then the empire adopted Christianity. Chiliasm became a bad word, although why isn't exactly clear but I think I have an idea. Irenaeus hinted that the Roman Empire might be associated with the Antichrist, although he doesn't claim this from tradition, but says he won't brag that he may have discovered a calculation of 666. Tertullian and Hippolytus don't leave any doubts about Rome's association with Antichrist. The idea was that the Roman Empire would dissolve and the Antichrist will appear. It may be that the idea of an earthly kingdom other than Rome, which Nepos described, and the dissolution of the empire was contrary to the interest of Rome. I can see how this wouldn't be a very popular thing to tell Constantine. Eusebius actually changed his eschatology after Rome accepted Christianity. In one place in his church history, Eusebius praises the apostolic father Papias, and in another place he calls him not very intelligent and blames him for bringing chiliasm into the church. Then Augustine developed amillennialism, and that was the standard eschatology of most of Christianity until after the Reformation. Augustine described a chiliasm like that of the Egyptian bishop Nepos, very similar to premillennialism. The next time we'll look at post-Reformation premillennialism.